Okay, hello, greetings and welcome. Now, let's talk about teaching children magic. Where, where do you start? How do you engage children in the magical path? Now, the first part is there's seven year cycles. In the first seven years of your life, you have this first layering of your identity. Then the second seven years, you come to terms with that layering and then the third seven years you take ownership of it and then you become an adult. That first seven years, uh, we need to generate um, basic fundamental patterns. So from just a, a physical standpoint, they need to develop their balance. If a child develops excellent balance, physical balance skills in the first seven years of their life, the last seven years of their life will be very high quality because they'll maintain good balance. So things like balance boards, playing on those uh, Swiss aerobics balls, um, climbing trees, uh, and getting kids started in, in things like judo, mixed martial arts very early where they're in wrestling, where they're training their balance and their balance is being challenged by people in their environment. So this, this aspect of, of water is very, very important. Now, when we look at, um, uh, let's say martial arts training and they're in a judo club or even on the soccer field, they're playing the game, they're being challenged by another person and they have to push themselves to overcome the challenge their willpower is developed. So the sooner you, you basically get your ass kicked on the soccer field, you get up and you keep playing. You're forced to a situation where you have to, have to get up and dig deeper. And the earlier children have this uh, forced expression of their will, the better. If they get this quality arising early in life, then throughout their whole life, whenever, whenever they get knocked down, they're going to get up. So we need to establish a habit very early. So from the moment an MMA type of school allows children to join, might be four years old, they should be in there being challenged, being knocked to the ground and getting up. Their willpower strengthens and overcomes. The next thing that needs to be looked at is um, their, their elasticity of their body. You know, from the age of uh, one and a half, two, when they start walking, they should start gymnastics. They should be developing uh, elasticity through jumping on a trampoline, through uh, balance work, as we mentioned before, but body strength balance. So doing a handstand and walking around on your hands, doing handstand push-ups. Balance and strength need to integrate together in a very extreme way in the first seven years. When they can throw their own body weight around and be balanced, they can throw another person's body, around, body weight around and be balanced. That means if there's a disease inside of another person's body, they can throw that disease out. Because they've got such good control of their own body, they can control another person's body. So having games like uh, regulating their heart rate, putting a heart rate meter on, okay, let's relax the heart rate. These sorts of body control games, EG games, so you put an EG machine on, control your brainwave patterns. Any game that gives them conquer, that allows them to conquer themselves is a huge benefit. And that needs to be established in the first seven years of life. Now we look at the four categories of fire, air, water, and earth. The children need to be outdoors for one quarter of their training. So they're walking up in the mountains, they're, they're, they're picking leaves from trees and smelling flowers and vital breathing into those different frequencies and experiences and integrating into nature and doing it in such a way that they're challenged. Oh, let's go to the top of that mountain. And they climb up that hill and they'll call it a mountain and they'll find a steeper hill, which is actually getting closer to what a real mountain is. And they'll climb that and climb that. And of course, being safe and using common sense. But these types of adventurous challenges need to be in place. So this type of uh, um, uh, fire adventure needs to be there. And this is a big part of the training. They need to be making, under, making informed uh, decisions. So if, a, if your child does something wrong, you, you have to go, oh, why did you do that? Get them to contemplate the nature of it. So sit quietly for a moment, think about what you did. What would have been a better decision? 
and let them choose, let them decide, let them see the error in their ways. You're not allowed to tell them. You need them to teach themselves through contemplation. So they need to contemplate how they think, how they feel and how they act and control it and be master as early as possible within their life. So this, this process of taking a child from, from uh, okay, yeah, my child's just starting to walk, to turning them to an adventure, a strong willpower. They're, they're, they're defeating barriers, they're climbing mountains, they're, they're going up trees and having fun, and <clears throat> their, their, their adventurous spirit is coming out as early as possible. Now, hermetics takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage just to write down the dark side of your personality and go, what am I going to do about this? And then it takes a lot more courage to do something about it. So you need to develop that courage in a child very early where they look at themselves and go, okay, I'm going to write down this whiteboard, my strongest points, my weakest points, and then I'm going to delete all the weak points, I'm going to build all the strong points. And when you have a, a child who's um, three years old talking about that, how to become stronger, how to become smarter, how to become more socially intelligent, and, and how to just sit quietly in stillness, it develops a very unique human being who takes control of their life. So your key to raising a child is not to tell the child what to do. If you want your child to work in a factory or a day job being told what to do, then tell them what to do. But if you want your child to be a master of their destiny, you need them to contemplate their own behavior and make better decisions. So a simple question, what would be the best thing to do in that situation? Think about it and let me know. Write it on the whiteboard and you can talk to me about it later. So you don't, you don't abolish them and, and, and put them down for what they did. You don't punish them. You, you tell them, let's work out a better way. The past is the past. You have to work out a strategy for good behavior. You have to work out a strategy to make your mind stronger. You have to work out a strategy to, to have a better life. And that child has to work that strategy out themselves. And you need to ask the right questions so they give you the right answers. And those great questions that generate right answers in your child's mind will form their personality. They need to be a master of their own mind, their own feeling, their own body, by the way you interact with them. You need them to contemplate, think, make good decisions, and move in the direction they feel is best for them. And to do this to a two-year-old, a three-year-old is challenging, but it's, it's possible. As soon as that communication starts to open, that dialogue starts to open, getting children to contemplate what they're doing and why they're doing it, rather than screaming at them, this is important. When you raise your hand and you're angry at your kid, what happens? Their mental body withdraws. Their astral feelings withdraw. They feel remorse. But unconsciously, a baby cries for attention. Now, they're going to cry in a good way or a bad way to get attention. And if they have to cry to get you to raise the hand to get some attention and love from you, that's what they're going to do. So being sensitive to their needs and giving an appropriate amount of attention is what's going to stimulate the right type of growth. So asking great questions to your child generates great answers and they follow their own answers. They choose their way in life. And from the age of two years old, they are being allowed to choose what they wear. They're able allowed to choose how they think, how they speak, how they act. This is what makes a master. A slave is a person who's told what to do. A master is a person who's given intelligent, great questions to formulate intelligent, great answers within their own mind and choose what to do. So you control the answer by asking the right questions. So this is your basic fabric to raising children in a spiritual way. Now, the actual training itself in relation to, to doing magic, vital breathing is your opening. Willpower, breath, stretch, build the ball. Children feel this straight away. Kids are really sensitive. Then start playing the energy work with, with the trees. Then start playing with the energy work of people and, and plants and environments and breathing into the forest, breathing into two trees at the same time. 
three trees at the same time. Walking through the garden, looking at a flower and appreciating the beauty and breathing into the, the flower. Charging a bottle of water up with energy and put prayer into it and then water the plant. When you see a child doing this, there's something so special, you just want to cry because they're, they're so early in their life appreciating the ecology of nature and protecting it. And that type of child becomes very, very, very special. So you put this energy into them that they appreciate their environment. And the only way you can get children to protect their environment from a true causal level is they have to identify, I am the environment. If they are separate to the environment, it will be an artificial behavior. But if you get them to vital breathe into the trees, into the forest and, and water the garden and take care of everything, and they love that space, they become a protector of the space, protector of the forest. And as soon as they have that, there's unconscious desire to learn about plants, about biology and ecology and, and sciences. And that yearning to want to learn awakens because they are the caretaker of the forest. They're the protector of the forest. So we start at this earth level of, of learning what does omnipresence mean? And then from that level of omnipresence, we, we move into the love and the caring that comes for, for that space and those plants and those trees. And from there, we move into understanding. The air element arises and they want to learn about it. And then comes action. They act upon their understanding, their caring, their connection, their protection, and they're, they're entering into, into an ecological new age. Now, this all seems like basic psychology, not magic, but it's the fabric of magic. It, what, what makes the hermetic, hermeticist be a hermeticist. And when you have a seven-year-old who is in this resonance with nature, they're practicing magic. So this life force free breathing exercise of stretching the joints out, connecting the will and the breath into the ball, feeling the fluids, breathing it in and out of the pores, breathing in and out of into water that you give to your plants, breathing into food before you eat, and teaching children how to pray. Now, you don't have to pray to anyone in particular, but showing gratitude in prayer, that there's a thanks for what they're receiving. When there's gratitude, whatever they show gratitude for gives them an unconscious attractive power that pulls more of that into their experience. So they know if they're humble and have gratitude for beautiful things, they get more beautiful things. And this attractive power builds up a resonance with their unconscious mind to have more nice things in their life. Now, everyone has to go through the, the stage of development that things are important. And then when they get to the point of equanimity and see the inherent emptiness of those things, They'll only want things that are functional, not things that are, are just there as an attachment. So they'll lose their attachment to brands and they'll lose their attachment to fashions and they'll lose their attachment to all the artificial things in the environment. And they will recognize the important things in the environment. And that's where they'll express themselves through, through things that matter, not things that don't. So working with children from this life force level it will bring them into resonance with the spiritual world of nature. And there will be this balance of understanding nature from a, a direct experience to understanding the spiritual consciousness of nature to understanding the science behind nature, what kids learn in a science class. But they'll be on Google researching it well before they ever learn it in science class because that sense of connectivity they get early generates the need for learning. When you do a lot of vital breathing, you amplify a need for education. Uh, when I really started to understand life force fields and spend time in them, I had to study three hours a day. And it was an overwhelming need. I would just be pulling information in and I couldn't stop myself. I became unhappy if I wasn't learning. So life force breathing into space around you expands consciousness pulls the layers apart and, and stimulates the air pillar which yearns to understand. 
and kids aren't going to be playing video games, they're going to be, be on the internet doing educational videos about nature and about how things are built and why things are the way they are because there's this underlying need for that. But if, if a child's mind is too contracted to themselves and withdrawn and, and con in their own self-identity, why would they want to learn? It's, they're too, too preoccupied with having things and having emotional experiences and watching movies and so forth. Their, their mind isn't going to be, want to be out in the yard playing, climbing trees and, and learning about those trees and learning about nature. So when you're educating children in the spiritual path, we look at these four elemental qualities, the, the earth, water, fire and air. Air is how do you stimulate learning? Fire, how do you stimulate the adventure spirit? Water, you, you're learning about balance within life, the scales, physical balance within the body. Earth, there's a time and a place just to sit quietly and uh, build your mind, concentrate. So the putting things together, having a, have a, having a process of thinking, engaging a process of feeling and putting it into an action plan and manifesting things in physical reality is part of the earth. And just sitting in stillness for a few minutes a day to contemplate the nature of reality or just in, indulge in stillness is important. So when you look at all the areas of the development, the fire, air, water and earth, the water is what are their social needs? Make sure they're met. What are their learning needs? Make sure they're met. What are their adventuring needs? Make sure they're met. And what is the quietude and private time, space and manifesting of their desires and their ideas, that, that earth time? Look at all those aspects and get children to understand them. That, oh, it's important to go out and train your willpower, you know. Go to the MMA school and be challenged. You're mentally challenged, you're emotionally challenged and the limitations of your body are challenged. You develop balance. They have to understand why they go there. If they are learning to play the guitar, why are they getting these lessons? Uh, they need to understand that there's a rhythm and flow to things in life. And learning a musical instrument allows you to understand and be sensitive to these rhythms so that you can be in harmony in all the other areas of your life. So when they understand the benefit uh, of things energetically, that, oh, if I do this, that's going to be better. If I do that, that's going to be better. If I learn about this, oh, I'll feel happier because I understand things. They, they will be able to correlate all these different aspects of their personality and make sense of it. You're not teaching them mystically in the background. You're getting them to teach themselves and look at themselves. The next aspect is the black and white mirror of the soul to start looking at the fundamentals of psychology. Ah, fire emotions, anger, irritability, out outrightness, rashness, all these fire qualities. Get them to identify these qualities within you, within people around them, within themselves. Start to understand, ah, that person's face is pink, they're on fire and they're experiencing fire emotions. And uh, that understanding of the base psychology allows them, when they start training fire element, that they can, ah, oh, I just breathe fire element in my body, bring my fire element to stillness, and those emotions disappear, generating magical equilibrium. So this gives them a basic tool, and they'll see, ah, oh, someone's like this, they're crossed, they're laying back, ah, oh, they're not listening to me, they're in this earth state of closedness. Ah, oh, if their hands are open and they're leaning forward, ah, oh, they're in the air state of openness and they want to learn. If they give you a hug, they're in a water state. You know, if they're being animated, they're in an air state. And understanding body language relationships to the elements makes children investigate and understand psychology. They'll automatically know good people and bad people. And they will be able to select who their friends are intelligently, not based on social pressures or loneliness or anything like that. They will look at someone, well, that's a good person. And they'll look at another person and go, oh, I don't know if I should be around them. And they can make those judgments because of their understanding of the black and white mirror. When they see the positives with their own personality and the negatives in their personality and they make a choice what direction they want to go, they do this from an early age, what's going to happen? 
they're going to go in those positive directions. So getting them to understand the psychology, you're not saying do this or do that. You get them to see the benefits of this and that, and then they choose. And they're going to choose the right direction because they have understanding. Then when they reach the point of building elements, and you build the air element, oh, I'm so animated, and they express it, and they switch animation off, and they go back to stillness, and they go through one emotion to the next, and create an element, fuel an emotion, dissolve the emotion, dissolve the element. They switch things on, switch things off. Their mind becomes highly flexible, so that when they pay attention to something, they can become what they're paying attention to. Their mind can vibrationally match it. This is called psychometry. And then as they get deeper and deeper into it, they separate what they're identifying with and observing that identity so they can understand and see it more clearly from a distance. So all your fundamental skills of hermetics where an adult is going to approach hermetics like, okay, I've got to sit and meditate and I've got to practice. Where the child is going to approach hermetics with, I just want to have fun. And when you can steer the fun and joy of life through these hermetic doorways, they're going to be developing themselves spiritually, enjoying their life, and having a very fruitful life. Because their mind is growing at a much faster rate than normal children. Children do not learn well when they're told what to do. But if you ask a child a question, and they go and Google it, and then they teach you the answer, the neurology of the brain is forever different in relation to that information. So get your children to teach you. Don't try and share your vast knowledge with them. Ask questions about your vast knowledge, which invokes the answer from the child, and let them explain it to you. And you'll notice whenever you teach something to someone, your unconscious mind reorganizes that information on a much deeper, higher level than if you're being tested on it. So don't test your children. Question them. Say, oh, what do you think about this? What is that? Do trees think? Let them Google it. So the, these types of training methods are just basic psychology. Any psychologist will know that so our children learn much faster in this way. Then how does it go into esoteric psychology? How do we weave this in so that their unconscious mind and their conscious mind have a very close relationship? Most people don't have a relationship with their unconscious mind. The unconscious mind is dictating everything they consciously do. But when you can consciously see things rise and fall away in your mind, in your feelings, in your body, you develop a relationship with your unconscious mind where you steer your unconscious directions. And you've got to teach children to steer these energies very early in life. The first seven years is, is the basic blueprint. 80% of you is formed in that first, first seven years. So the most of your vocabulary comes from your first seven years. So it's a very important. Establish that first seven years very, very intelligently and never tell your children what to do. By telling them what to do, you're turning them into a factory worker, an office worker who's just going to be told what to do. Because the first seven years of life is the blueprint. That is who they are. So love your children, give them a lot of freedom, get them to question and contemplate everything they do so they can make better decisions. As you read through Franz Baden's book, Initiation to Hermetics, you're going to find very, very creative ways to express those exercises with your children. And the fun of the method, the better. When, when I was with my teacher, he had run a children's class and he had fill a shoebox with little toys, you know, little, little, little uh, statues and matchbox cars and He'd put it in the middle of the room and the kids would sit in a big circle and say, okay, everybody, close your eyes. I want you to put your mind inside the box and play with the toys. And all the kids would jump their mind into the box and start playing with the toys. And then he would take each toy out of the box one at a time. He'd pull it out and put it on the table. Now play with the toy on the table with your mind. And then he'd empty all the toys out. And then he'd put them back in the box. Okay, let's do it again. Put your mind in the box and play with the toys. Now, their mind is being very highly trained in this exercise. They're testing their intuition and they're visualizing. They're being playful, having fun. 
Their mind plays with the toys on the table. They're not allowed to touch them. So they just have to do it with their mind. And they're having adventures. And then they put the toys back in the box. They do it again. Now, when he puts the toys back in the box, he puts them in exactly the same place they were when he started. What this does, the children release time and they get this, this ability to, to see 10, 15 minutes into the future. That's where the toys are when I see them in 10, 15 minutes. But they experience it right now and they play inside the box in their mind. It comes out, goes back in, and it's reorganized in that way that it was. So they get this time loop happening in their astral body. And you add some astral breathing exercise into it, you charge the room with a release of time, and the children are in resonance. They just start click, 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 and their intuition starts waking up. And then you give framing to this, this, uh, these experiences, that every time you put yourself in this state, you can see what's in the box, or see what's happening over there, or put your mind in, in another place and see what's there. You anchor it to the experiences of success with the children and you turn it into a game. Remember, you're dealing with children, not adults. So it's got to be playful, it's got to be fun and they're going to want to do that on their own. So they're going to go home and they're going to play with their toys, put it in a box, close the box and close their eyes and play. And their mind is going to become highly trained, highly disciplined. And then when they learn something, they're highly visual, they're highly sensitive, they feel things when they're learning, and their mind will be playing and formulating and understanding visually, in sound and in feeling, of the information they're learning. So they become super learners. And this is your basic ideas in hermetics, is how do you stimulate neurogenesis in your child's brain? How do you make them a super learner? How do you get them to grow really, really fast? This is very important for children. So in, in bringing children into a spiritual path, I mean, I'm calling this hermetics and magic, but this is basic, basic psychology for all children. Every child should, should have this opportunity to grow at an accelerated rate. So at the end of the day, fun, encourage learning through getting them to investigate. So you never tell them what to do or tell them the answer you let them find the answer. Lots and lots of love. Give them lots of hugs and make the, the learning process really enjoyable. The more you love them, the more they learn. There has to be this interaction within that, that they are rewarded with more attention by doing things right. It's a very simple reward system. And they get so overly awarded, there's no reason for them to crave attention through doing things wrong. When they get an idea and they take the idea into a feeling and they take the feeling into a form, encourage them to finish each of the tasks and projects that they're doing. So if they start doing a drawing and they want to jump onto something else, go, wow, let's finish this drawing, that looks so good. And they get excited and they finish their drawing. So getting children to move from the mental to the astral to the physical to completion of every project they do is vitally important if they want success in their life, not only physically, but magically. Okay, we'll continue this uh, conversation um, uh, on the uh, Initiation of Hermetics channel on Vimeo, and I'll do a series of videos on this, uh, on this topic over the coming months. And as there's lots of parents there who are, are looking for keys to how to raise children in this path, now, if you're, you're not, if you don't have children, you can apply the same psychology to yourself. You can apply the same psychology to your spouse. You can apply the same psychology to your colleagues at work. And anyone that you're responsible for, you can take this, this, uh, uh, this approach and you'll find that it'll work very, very effectively. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time and uh, stay happy.